I'm Daphne Good, and thanks for joining us on the program today. We're here in Shimanus at the Vancouver Island Soap Factory, Kogi Naturals. Welcome to Go Island, Cowichan Valley. On today's show, Darlene and Tony Newton share their delight in creating natural soaps, bringing people together with scarf making, living with MS, and the Youth Voice Awards. All that and more on Go Island, Cowichan Valley. Go Island is brought to you by German Auto Import Network. Well, they won Manufacturing Business of the Year, and that was awarded by the Shimanus and District Chamber of Commerce to the Newtons here at Kogi Natural Soaps. And congratulations uh, for Dad. that, Darlene. Thank I you. think that's marvelous. Thank you. What was really interesting to me, though, was that you actually beat out the mill and a few other businesses for this award. I mean, that's pretty awesome for a small business, especially. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're, we are quite small, and um, yeah, we were really we were surprised. We were very surprised to have won that. How lovely! And uh, as well, because you are in Shimanus, but you originally were manufacturing in Calgary. I think it draws attention to the fact that a little place like Shimanus uh, can certainly um, bring forward some interesting business entrepreneurs like yourselves. It can and it's a beautiful place to be. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the business of soap and how it all started. I know for you it's a very personal story that you happen to have sensitive skin and couldn't find products that would really work for you. So tell me that. It was um, probably 20 years ago and Every time I used soap, it just burnt. It burnt me everywhere. So Tony and I found a little place in Calgary that was doing natural soap making courses. And we decided to take it. And it's just flourished since then. We started making soap for friends and family. And then we did markets. And um, finally, we got some wholesale accounts. And it's just grown. That's been the natural progression of it. Amazing. Well, the base ingredients in soap aren't that challenging. It's like olive oil, coconut oil, palm oil, and good oils for your skin. And um, sodium hydroxide, which is lye and water, and they mix, and the chemical reaction just forms the soap. The challenges are to scent it. So to scent it naturally, the, the process can kill the scent. And so it's just that that's our, been our biggest challenge. And let's face it, most of us really like a lovely scent, especially in the bathtub and with our soaps. So how, how have you managed to sort of through this voyage of discovery find a way to scent without using harmful products? We have learned the process of blending essential oils and some stay longer and some fade longer. So it's just a matter of blending the two different ones together so that you do get a scent that stays longer. In your research, Darlene, with, with you and Tony both being involved, you had never done this before, so I imagine you would have had to really do a lot of research about plants, about all kinds of products, because you don't want to harm the earth. We did. We did a lot of, um, a lot of research on what plants grow quickly, which are replenished quickly, and which are not. And so we've chosen to use the ones that are replenished more quickly into the earth. Are there certain popular items for you as well as for people who are buying your products? I'm curious. Um, one of our most popular lines and one of the best skin oils that we use is actually hemp oil. Nice. And hemp oil is known as a dry oil, so it moisturizes without being oily and it's super healing and very nourishing for your skin. Perfect. Now, tell me about the name, Kogi Soap, I think is really interesting because it sort of sounded to me kind of tribal, but uh, I, I just think it's really interesting when people are discovering and researching their own company names. So how did it come about? The name came about from my grandfather and my father calling me Kogi when I was very, very little, like probably two and three years old. And then both of them passed on, and when we formed this company, we decided to name it in their honor, Kogi Naturals. And a girl who did a lot of design work for us um, decided to research the name and found that it is in fact a tribe in South America known as the Kogi people and they are also known as the keepers of the earth. So it fits so beautifully with what we were doing. That must have been magic when you found out about that connection. We couldn't believe it. No kidding. We couldn't believe it. It was magic. 
Tony has a background in engineering. Darlene was a sales coordinator when they worked in Calgary prior to moving to Chimanus. Food and beverage industry experience for Tony has been of great value in the soap making business. Darlene experiments with scents and suds as we enter the small kitchen of the soap making plant. Let's talk about some of the product we have behind us and we're going to show actually the foaming process, which as we were saying earlier, scent is important and foam is really important when it comes to it soap. Is. <laughs> so we're in a little corner of the manufacturing plant with the tools of the trade around us and some foamers. So tell me what's included in these bottles, Darlene. Okay, in these bottles are samples of our liquid soap, um, our essential oils for scent and the water. And so we're trying to figure out which is the best formula for the foamers. We have new foamers now, so this is one of our new ones. So we have to test the formula to make sure it foams well mm. in different foamers. So here you go. Oh neat, I'll get to try this out. So done slowly. Ooh, well it feels good. It, it like a lot of emulsion. Good. It feels like it has a lot of emulsion. Mm -hmm. Look at that. It's foaming yeah. up really well. And is it psychological? I think it must be that we don't feel clean unless we get sort of some kind of foam when we're using a soap, right? And it's true, and that makes mm. our job eat harder because now we have to figure out which oils to put in right. that give a lot of foam. Right, wow, that's yeah. really foamy. It is, and if you press it faster, you get bigger bubbles and less foam. Oh, that's fun. Now, now why are some of these different colors? Different essential oils, they're exactly pretty much the same formula. This one has natural vanilla in it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it goes brown. Mm. I want to try I some want of that to too. Some. Oh, okay. I want us both to get all foamed up here. I want to see if there's a difference. Mm. Be Do a you different... know the scent of that? What that is it? has some uh, mm. lemongrass in I it, bet I you, believe. You, you become really good at identifying yeah, the various do. properties and yeah. scents. Yeah. Mm, that is gorgeous. So this one. Oh, yeah. It's Lavender lovely. and vanilla. You spend all day doing this. I, yeah, we do. <laughs> it's so much fun. It is. That is great. While we're doing uh, this lovely foaming exercise, Charlene, let's give people some good tips for, for keeping their skin uh, in the best condition possible during the winter months, because everybody knows that's one of the toughest times. It is, and my first tip would to keep hydrated, drink lots of water. And my second and third tip would be to exfoliate, either mm -hmm. with um, loofah or dry brushing is a wonderful way to exfoliate your skin. Start at the at your extremities and move up towards your heart mm -hmm. and moisturize, moisturize. Mm. Always moisturize. We've Always heard moisturize. That. Especially girls have heard that since we were about seven, I probably, know. from I all know. of our good moms. Face well, and body. That's excellent. Thank you so much. We're having a great deal of fun, and we're going to be back in just a, a little bit of time with Tony. Thanks so much, right. Darlene. Thank you. Both Tony and Darlene have done research on sustainable products and work diligently to provide earth-friendly products using shea butter, castor oil, olive, and palm oils. Their products do not use petroleum or parabens and are biodegradable. Well, I want to talk about some of your customers that do come directly off the water. You've got quite a boating clientele that frequent Shimanus and you've actually been able to, like most good entrepreneurs, find a niche market in a sense and provide something really useful. Yes, um, well it started when we first opened. Uh, everybody that came to the store just to look or buy, they always left with a small sample of our soap. And um, it came up that these people came up from the US, boaters, and they were gonna do the tours, gave them the soap. Now they wanted to buy more because it's perfect size for them to jump off, mm -hmm. shower, so you leave it there, so be it, you know, and they don't worry about it. But a lot of them as well were very interested in the ingredients, saying, you know, I can put it in my tanks on board ship and I'm, I'm not worried about chemicals. Mm -hmm. You know, this was huge to some of them. So then, basically what we done, we grabbed a little bag, wrapped up eight, ten, little ribbon, we started selling them. <laughs> yeah. The word got out. <laughs> wow, well, now, boaters just come up, grab their soap, grab their lotions, grab their shampoo, and 
<laughs> Off they go. It's and it all started with a little bits of soap. That's a neat story. Very satisfying, I'm sure. Oh, it's fantastic. We don't use anything. Anything that's irritable, um, just slight irritations, is gone. We will not use it. We will find a substitute for it. Everything has to be biodegradable. Um, being here in the ocean, right here at the ocean, everything goes out there. Mm -hmm. I can sleep at night. With palm, it is a major part of our soap. Um, it makes a beautiful lather. It's gorgeous for the skin. Mm. So we stick with it. Um, we, we just try to stay with a sustainable product. While experiencing a steady growth in their business, both Tony and Darlene have been sourcing other Canadian products with some interesting results. We want to go across Canada. So I get beer from Tofino, from the island, Tofino Brewery, or Vancouver, uh, Victoria. Then there is Alberta. We take Big Rock beer. Uh -huh. Then we go into Ontario, unfortunately. It's the next one. <laughs> and that's where you get your Canadian, your blue. Maritimes, we have what we call the Maritimer, Moosehead beer. Right. So we go right across with their beer. So you're loyal to the regions. Oh, why not? I think it's a great. It, we cross had, promotion, great oh, cross yeah. promotion opportunities as well. Exactly, yeah. and we've had so much success. We'll be back after a brief break. And when we come back, it's a way to reach out and learn how communities connect. And all it takes is a scarf. Suchetta Singh will tell us more.